What's up guys, Eric here. Welcome to Rant and Preview, the weekly mega video where we talk about all of our favorite DC TV shows until they return for their fall premieres. Basically, I go through the internet, find any news or information that I find interesting that I think you guys would like to hear about, and we talk about it in this video, and then you get out in the comments and you let me know what you think about it. Before we get started with our normal lineup of shows, I want to address something about Gotham. Let's do this. So I want to discuss a mistake that was made on last week's Rant and Preview. It was brought to my attention that Gotham is in fact coming back this week week and not next week. I had originally said it came back on the 28th, but my information was outdated or incorrect. Really both it could be. So get hype. It comes back this week. It's going to be returning on Thursday, the 21st. Here's what we know about the premiere. Gordon fears Jonathan Crane is still alive and back in Gotham when the Scarecrow's signature MO is used in a series of robberies. Meanwhile, Penguin's licensing of crime in the city backfires during the grand opening of his new Iceberg Lounge. Also, in the aftermath of his encounter with Ra's al Ghul, Bruce begins his vigilante watch. So we know from all the early previews that this season is going to be a lot darker than the previous seasons, more so for Bruce and Gordon. Also, I'm very excited to see a lot of these villains finally come into their own and start to grow more into the stuff we know from the comics. Although I know the show is a view of an alternate multiversal version of Gotham, including new stories for both Bruce and Gordon as well as the villains, it's nice to see some of these characters with a sprinkle of their comic book counterparts. We should also be on the lookout for the Batman proto suit that has been shared like wildfire all over the internet. I know a lot of people don't like the way that the suit looks, and I can understand why, but I'm kind of excited to see it grow from the proto suit into something we all recognize. So are you guys excited about the return of Gotham this week? Remember, I am doing a rant and review for Gotham this season, so expect that as well as a possible trailer reaction and highlights this week. Now let's talk about Supergirl. I did a trailer reaction and highlights video for Supergirl over the weekend, but I have not released it yet. Don't worry, it is going to be released later today. So you guys will be able to check that later on, or you can come back to this video and I'll try and link it here if I remember to do it, because I can be quite an airhead sometimes. Anyway, let's get into the news and information from this past week. We got even more information on Rain this past week, and now we know she won't be the full-on world killer that she is in the comics, which raises a bunch of questions for me. Here's what they had to say. When we meet Rain, she's just a woman. Her name is Samantha, and she's a single mom, and she has no idea that she is Rain. She has no idea that she was this baby in the pod at the end of last season. So the journey that she makes this season is watching her realize her heritage and how it manifests. I'm not only competing with myself on Supergirl, but I'm competing with myself on all the other shows that I've done. And by that, I mean I don't want to repeat what I've done on Supergirl, nor do I want to repeat what I've done on Arrow and Flash, Andrew Kreisberg said. Usually on these shows, you either meet the big bad at the end of episode one, or you meet them at episode seven or nine. And you realize that they've been pulling the strings the whole time, and we're out there working with their multi-year plan to take down the heroes or destroy the city. When we're figuring out Rain, one thing we've never really seen on any of these shows is we've never seen the big bad become the big bad. So this begs the question, what kind of powers does she have? If Samantha doesn't know she's from another planet or that she was designed to be a weapon, then how dangerous is she as a mother or an everyday person? The reason why I ask this is because if she's going to be powerful enough to take on Supergirl, she has to be a heavy hitter in more than just combat. Otherwise, she's way out of her league. My wish is that they explore the creation and the powers of this character in a deep and meaningful way. But chances are, since it's Supergirl, we'll be taken on more of an emotional journey, which is fine if you like that kind of story storytelling. Me personally, I hope to get a bit more out of this character and explore the reasons why Krypton would create such a thing in the first place and send it to Earth. I'm hoping to be surprised by Supergirl this season, so my fingers are crossed, but I'm still very skeptical. What do you guys think about this? Are you excited about the way they're going to handle this character, or are you not impressed with this version they're talking about? Let me know in the comments below. We also found out that Supergirl will be getting a suit upgrade this season, but we aren't sure why. Here's what Melissa had to say. There's a different suit that I'll be wearing at some point this season, but I won't tell you when or to what capacity. It's cool though. So that could mean a variety of things. Maybe she needs a suit upgrade to help her increase her solar power intake. Maybe she needs a new suit because her old one gets destroyed. Maybe she needs a new suit because of rain. I talk about all this and more in a video I did about this last week, and I'm going to link it in the corner. We also get a hint of a new villain coming to Supergirl in Season 3. Does the name Robert Du Bois mean anything to you guys? This character goes by Bloodsport, and he's a classic character coming to life on Supergirl. 
Now in the comics, he has had tech and powers. He can teleport weapons to him while out in the field, as well as other things. He has used kryptonite weapons in the past, most notably bullets made of kryptonite. And if you guys watch Smallville, you will know early on in that series, they had a character, not Bloodsport, who did the same to Clark using kryptonite bullets. So maybe we'll see something similar to that here with Bloodsport. He could also be an anti-hero character on Supergirl. That show could kind of use that type of character. Uh, or maybe he could pair off against the Guardian. There's also going to be a cult of Supergirl. Here's the info. Chad Lowe is going to play a leader of a Supergirl cult in season three. He'll play Thomas Coville, a charismatic religious leader with a surprising connection to Supergirl. His cult basically worships the Girl of Steel. He's a deeply spiritual man committed to preaching his faith and transforming his followers' lives. So this kind of aligns with what we saw in the DCEU where Superman had people who worshipped him and ultimately made other people resent him. I'm so curious if they're going to try and distinguish why his cult followers only follow Supergirl and not both Supergirl and Superman on the series. It doesn't make much sense to only worship one of the two of them since they both took part in saving the world and they're both from Krypton. It just seems really strange that a cult would form around just one of the two of them. So I really hope they do a good job explaining to us why this is the case if it indeed ends up playing out that way. Now let's talk about the Flash. So we had a fan share a picture of the new suit as it set on display in the mannequin case. This gives us a great look at the new colors on the suit as well as some of the finer details that we didn't get to see on camera. Most notably is the new more vibrant red we get throughout the entire costume. Also the pops of gold and yellow along with the trim just jumps out here. And I know some people are on the fence about which suit they prefer, but to me this is a huge step up and I'm very excited to see it in action when it comes back on the show. We also got some info on how Barry is going to start out in season four and the path he will be on. Here's what we've learned. Initially, Barry is pretty scrambled when he comes out of the Speed Force, Grant Gustin tells EW. He's not himself. He's talking nonsense. The way I see it, when he was in the Speed Force, he experienced his whole life laid out in front of him from start to finish. So in some sense, he comes out very wise, kind of knowing everything, but has no understanding of what he's seen. So he comes out very jumbled and talking what he thinks makes complete sense, but it's just nonsense to the rest of the crew. So after Barry joins us outside of the Speed Force, he'll be way more informed than he has ever been. He will have experienced so many facets of his life, things the Speed Force has shown him that he'll be very prepared for whatever comes his way. But will he know any new skills? Did he level up inside of the Speed Force? And we'll slowly learn about these changes throughout the season. If he comes out of the Speed Force with so much knowledge, he will feel unstoppable when facing off against the Thinker. Now, all of this sounds really promising. The new tone, the new Barry. I just hope they double down on this and we don't end up like five episodes in and Barry feels like the same old Barry from seasons past. I don't want the various writers to forget how new and different he's supposed to be. Let's see how that plays out. So Tom Felton seems to have departed the show and in a big way. We haven't seen any images or signs of him as part of the team starting out in season four. The showrunners have stated that they will address this pretty early in season four and that we'll know exactly why he left and it will make sense. They also told us he could come back in a guest spot eventually, but as it stands, there are no plans for that. So for fans of this character, it seems like we're going to be giving Julian an off-screen goodbye from Team Flash, and it could feel very underwhelming, more so considering how much he cared for Caitlyn, and it seems she's going to be back with the team early on. So how do you guys feel about this? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's talk about Legends. One of the biggest surprises from the team behind Legends is that we would see one of the most iconic Flash characters jumping ship to face off against our Legends. We're informed that at some point Gorilla Grodd would show up. Well, we don't have to wait too long. As early as Episode 7, it looks like we will get our wish. In the episode titled Welcome to the Jungle, we see the title page with a set of dog tags and a handprint that looks to be Gorilla Grodd's hand. So I have a feeling that our team will encounter a version of Grodd we haven't seen over at The Flash. Will he be smarter, stronger, more in charge than we've ever seen before? I hope so. I think it'll be very cool to see an alternate version of Grodd, even more comic book-like than the one we had on The Flash. Although I love the one on The Flash, so I'm not complaining. It's Legends. They can push it to a thousand if they want, and I think it would be fun. What do you guys think about this? Now, let's talk about Arrow. Stephen Amell recently spoke to EW, and he had this to say about Laurel. She looks exactly like Laurel Lance. She is Laurel Lance. Laurel Lance is the most famous dead person in Star City. So eventually, at some point, if she's reintroduced to public life, how do we unpack that? I'm excited for that. That's the dynamic I think could be interesting. 
So I know what he's saying may seem pretty obvious at this point. Yes, of course, bringing her back into the public after her death and her legacy being such a huge deal in Star City, it would be jarring. It would feel crazy. But does this mean that the general public on Arrow is going to learn about the multiverse? The reason I feel this may happen is because she's a very different Laurel from the one that the city knew. If they don't distinguish the difference between this Laurel and the Earth-1 Laurel, this criminal version will tarnish her legacy and possibly make the city turn on that memory. So I think they'll either address the multiverse to the public or they will very quickly have that redemption arc for Laurel and have a return under mysterious circumstances alive and well. It's gonna be a touchy subject no matter what they do at this point because some fans of Earth 1 Laurel don't like Earth 2 Laurel and some people are just happy to have Laurel back in any capacity. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. We also find out that Diggle's wife Lila will return in episode 6 of season 6, which is the second half of the Deathstroke 2 episode arc. It's called Promises Kept, and we don't have any other details at this time. There is a bit of speculation though, if Diggle doesn't survive the island, then this might be flashbacks for Deathstroke's past. But chances are Diggle did survive, and she will appear in present day along with him and Team Arrow for some Deathstroke action. We also got some interesting tidbits from a recent Heroes and Villains fan fest where Stephen Amell confirmed that the new series intro voiceover will talk about events of the last season in such detail that it would contain spoilers. He also talked about how Oliver will be much happier at the start of season six. He'll be content and smiling quite a lot. He did confirm that it wouldn't be like that all season long. Of course, this is Arrow and there's just as much dark as there is light. One of the most interesting reveals is that Oliver will be getting a new suit. That's right, a new Arrow suit. In season five, we got pretty much the same suit as we got in season four, except with covered sleeves instead of open arms that we saw in season four. We also saw in the trailer that Oliver's getting a new bow in season six, and he confirmed that we would see new trick arrows this season, along with a very special trick arrow for the crossover event. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. And we finally got some news from Krypton in the form of a casting. We have found our Adam Strange, ladies and gentlemen. Sean Sipos has been cast in the role of Adam Strange for the new TV series that is supposed to be a prequel for the DCEU. At least that's what we've been led to believe. We don't know. There are so many rumors. I guess we'll have to wait and see when the series premieres. It's not known exactly how close to the comics his character is going to be, but hopefully they don't change him too much because I actually like the idea of getting a comic book accurate Adam Strange on the TV series. And we also got some news from Black Lightning. Now this series has been one of concern for me for a while now, mostly because of the mixed signals the team behind the show has been sending us. And now we're finding out that the show is not an origin story, which isn't too out of left field. You know, they could map out the character's past in dialogue or flashbacks, which could be a way to tell his story. But what really bugs me is how they describe this character. Here's what they had to say. So talking about Jefferson Pierce, who is Black Lightning, they say he's got aches and pains, he's not as useful, and that's something that is unique. They also talk about his wife saying that the superpowers he has are like a drug. She's telling him to get off the drug. This sounds like a great series, right? Are we going to spend the entire first season being beat over the head about the aspects of being a hero and how wrong it is? Comparing using their powers to being addicted to drugs? That sounds absolutely horrible. I really hope this is more of a foundation aspect of the series and not something we see week to week. It sounds absolutely depressing and not something you'd want to sit and watch every single week. So my fingers are crossed and my hopes are up that Black Lightning comes through and does something different without seeming like a PSA, which is something I cannot stand with TV shows about superheroes. Wow, we got so much news and information and updates this past week. Like I'm writing my notes down and I'm like, this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is a lot more than I expected. But I'm like, I'm going to do as much as I can. Talk about as much as I can in this video so I can keep you guys up to date. I'm sure I missed something though. So if there's something that I didn't talk about in this video that came out this past week and you want to know my opinion or my thoughts on it, just leave it in the comments below. If I missed anything that you want me to talk about in next week's video, leave it in the comments below. Also, let me know what you're excited for, what you're not not excited for what you expect from all of this news and information down in the comments below. Basically, I'm saying leave a comment <laughs> because I want to hear from you guys. I love interacting with you guys and responding to you. If there's anything that confused you, maybe I can explain it. Maybe somebody else can explain it because it's a community thing. It's not just all about me. It's, it's about us, right? Um, also, don't forget this week, Gotham comes back on Thursday, the 21st. I don't know everybody's individual time zones, like the time it's going to be on. So check your local listings and find out, but expect a rant and review from me. My first rant and review of this season is going to be on Gotham. It will be up on Friday. 
I'm excited because I'm new to reviewing Gotham. I'm not new to the show. I've been watching it, but I'm new to reviewing it. So hopefully you guys are excited about that. Also, my Supergirl trailer and highlight video will go up today. Sometime this afternoon. I don't know what time yet. I'm not sure, but hit the notification bell on my page if you haven't already so you'll know when that video goes live. And plus, I'm going to be doing so much stuff this season. You just want to hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on everything that I'm doing. Uh, also, uh, people were asking me about my Marvel uh, you know, Monday videos, what, when I'm going to be doing that or why it's been delayed. Well, there's a lot of reasons why it's been delayed. I haven't really decided on the format. I haven't decided on the name yet. I'm just really trying to make sure that whatever I decide to do with it, that I can follow through with it. But I'm expecting it to premiere next week. I know I've said that a couple times, but this week I think I have an idea of what I want to do. It's not going to be exactly the same as these videos. So I'm kind of working with it a little bit. Hopefully that it'll grow organically as I'm making it. We'll see, but keep your eye out for it. It is coming. I haven't forgot about it. It will definitely happen before the premiere of the Marvel shows. I, I have to check all the dates on those, but I, I'm definitely going to do it before the premiere of those shows. Oh man, so much stuff. Anyway, thank you for spending your day with me in the Eric verse. I hope I didn't talk too long or bore you guys or anything like that. I really appreciate all your feedback and all your support. If you want to become part of the Eric verse and get involved with my discord server, which I'm going to be launching very soon. All you have to do is subscribe, like comment, just be part of the family. We love talk chatting with you guys. Also, don't forget the four uh, channel crossover at the end of this month, 7 PM GMT on Friday, the 29th. I know that's not a great time for everybody. There have been people telling me that I can't be there during that time. You guys are going to be live and I can't make it. Don't worry. It's going to be recorded. It's going to be on my channel. You'll be able to see it. You'll be able to interact in that comment section. But if you are free at 7 p.m. on the 29th, you know, 7 p.m. GMT on the 29th, make sure you stop in. We are going to be taking some questions from the chat room. You can interact. You can let all of the creators know it's going to be me. It's going to be Paige. It's going to be Boba Talks. It's going to be the DC TV show. All of us are going to be there. You can come in and leave your love and support. We really want to hear from you guys. And we want to do it at least once a month. So we need to know that you guys are interested. So if you are free, please come by. Go over on Twitter. Leave me a question there or you can leave a question down in this comment section for that video because I'm going to be taking questions from all over the place um, it's going to be crazy it's going to be a lot of fun though anyway I've talked way too long I have rambled on and if you made it all the way to the end of this video uh, let me know in the comments that you love pizza if you made it all the way to the end tell me you love pizza <laughs> anyway take care guys have a great day have a great week I'll catch you later today with my Supergirl video and tomorrow with another video don't know what it's going to be we'll see what's going to happen